Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about another J. Scott Campbell uh, inspired uh, statue. And this one is again of the Little Mermaid, uh, this time painted as uh, Ariel with the red hair. Uh, now, this follows my previous video, which showed the official licensed sideshow release. Uh, and that one, of course, shows the Little Mermaid in a completely different pose. Um, and later on, I will go through the um, calendars that he uh, put together over the last few years and kind of show you the source art that a lot of these uh, statues are um, based on. And sometimes, you know, he duplicates. And so he'll have a couple of um, uh, pictures um, based on the character, with different poses, that type of thing. So this one uh, is, as you can see, completely different, but it's the same character, Little Mermaid. Um, again, based off of the uh, J. Scott Campbell work on his calendar series, uh, Fairy Tale Fantasies. Now this is a custom garage kit, which means that um, it's not uh, produced by a big company. Uh, it's uh, sculpted and then a producer sort of, you know, creates a few very limited copies, typically 20 to 30 or less. And then you're responsible for building and painting it yourself or commissioning a professional uh, paint master to do the work for you. So a little bit of background uh, on this. The sculptor who um, created the original is a guy named Roberto von Beer, B-E-H-R, Roberto von Beer or von Beer, um, and he's very famous for you know sculpting female uh, resin kits, female statues. Uh, really, really uh, you know wonderful knowledge of anatomy. I'm actually sort of shocked that he hasn't really been snapped up by a company. Um, I don't think he's from the United States, and that could explain it to some degree. But in the garage kit community, he's actually very well known, and his work is always top notch, uh, excellent. They can always kind of tell. Uh, that he's involved or a sculpture uh, is done by him because of his distinctive style. So uh, he did the uh, sculpt. Um, I'll leave the producer uh, out uh, because you now there is some controversy right now about custom kits and garage kits and that type of thing. Um, so I won't mention the producer's name, not that I will remember anyways. Um, they all have you know, various handles and they're all in various places in the world. Uh, and to, truth to tell, I had this thing taken care of many, many years ago. I don't really, really even remember very well who was the original producer. The painter is uh, one of my favorite painters. Um, his name is Jim Capone. Uh, he works in the United States and he does a lot of these prototypes, um, you know, for uh, the producers and, you know, that type of thing. And he's an amazing uh, painter. Uh, his stuff is always first class. Um, and always pops, and I really love his work. Uh, he's also very busy, and um, you know, he doesn't like to keep clients waiting forever, and so he's hard to commission because you know he's so busy, and if he doesn't feel like he can get to you in a reasonable period of time, he just doesn't really accept any commissions. So I am um, lucky, and I feel honored to um, own a few of his works, and um, you know, this is uh, one of the first. So I was really taken by his um, paint up of the Little Mermaid. I bought the kit based on that, and then I was lucky enough to be able to, um, you know, ask him if he could do a similar paint job for me, and he said yes. And um, here we are. So again, you know, to understand um, the magnitude of the paint job, you know, all of this was just in pieces. Uh, just kind of imagine a airplane or a model kit of a car or something, unpainted, white resin in pieces. He has to clean all of that up. He has to paint all of it and put it all together and add um, this kind of magic to it. Uh, the scale is approximately one sixth. Um, I'll make another quick little video, um, sort of comparing her with a sideshow release. Um, I think she's a little bit smaller, but the scale is roughly about the same. Um, I think she is one sixth though, and I think that the sideshow might be one fifth which explains the size discrepancy. Uh, looking at the bottom, uh, this is nice and smooth, um, painted in, in blue, uh, a simple base, a very classy uh, brass um, color right here. 
and you know, it's a little bit dusty, that's fine. And then um, he has her on kind of like the uh, ship's uh, spoked uh, wheel, a uh, steering wheel. And then this is uh, sand with you know, little bottles uh, buried partially in it. There's a fork, a cup, bottles, etc. cetera. Uh, they all have a little bit of glass on them. There's a barrel right here. And you can see little bits of um, you can see little bits of treasure, a necklace, gold coins scattered. So actually, I, I um, I'm corrected. I correct myself. This is not a barrel. It's actually a partially buried treasure chest, and that's where all the treasure comes from. So again, uh, really neat, really nice. Um, and then there's a spike uh, hidden underneath there, and then you uh, place her on that spike. Um, you can see here, this is much more uh, translucent resin. I don't know even if this is resin or even maybe a type of glass or plastic, but it's much more see-through um, over here. And then you can also see uh, on the sides, sort of her see-through um, casting translucent resin here as well on the side of her, um, the beginning of her uh, tail. And then a little bit here as well. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I think is that part of the fin, it might be part of the, the fin or it could be like a little wave, but you can see the translucent parts here and here and then here. And on the Sideshow version, um, those aren't resin. They're like more of like a soft rubbery substance to prevent breakage. Um, so here you go. You can see the, the legs turning into the tail. You can kind of very subtly see the the musculature of the calves right there. There she is here. You can see the hips tapering down. And then uh, the back right over here. Again, I'll, I'll do a little bit of close-up work with flash to shine some light in, the, in these areas here. You can see her bright red hair. This is based right off the pose from the artwork for the calendar. So she has a little uh, belly button, I guess, piercing right there. You can see some of the, um, the freckle work that uh, Jim put here, right there, right here along the rib cage, along the chest, along the, the face. You can see sort of the flower, all the different bracelets and beads. She has a bra made of crustaceans and seashells, very artfully placed. Again, very true to the artwork, a little bit of ribbon of the hair. And then one hand's behind her head, the other one is, you know, up there making this little dancing move. You can see sort of the The rings are her fingers. She has one on all of them except the middle finger. And again, you can even see a little bit of freckles on the back of the hand, the forearm. And Roberto did a magnificent job uh, sculpting her. Very, very beautiful face. Do a close up there in the green eyes. You see the strand right here. Let me tell you, it was not the easiest thing to pack her. That strand of hair actually had to be separated and you had to actually uh, place it separately or else it would have snapped off. So here you go. I'm backing up again so I can see her. And then slowly turning her around. So I really love this piece. It was one of my first um, statues based off of J. Scott Campbell's work. Uh, and you know, Jim Capone really did a magnificent paint job on her. And this is the one that started it all, I think. Um, many years before SciShow licensed it, um, you know, and once I show you the source art, you can see that there's a lot of different um, statues you can make, you know, very, very beautiful, uh, unique uh, 
kits and statues, but Little Mermaid, this is what started it all. And you know, it was very popular. Uh, a lot of people, it was sold out very quickly. And I think there was, might, there might've been a second run. I think I was part of the second run also sold out. And now this is long gone. For all I know, the mold's already gone. But there's a lot of different versions of this out there, different colorations, uh, different spins on this character. But again, I think I went with the classic red hair, kind of the Ariel look. And again, um, Jim Capone did just a fantastic job. I'm very happy with that. Great pose, beautiful face, beautiful figure, great color. Nice translucent fins, a really, really neat base, very inventive. So, couldn't be happier with her. So next up, I'm going to turn on the flash and do a quick little overview of her with the flash on to give you a little bit of uh, a difference in perspective. So this is with the flash on. Let's take a look. So here with the lights on, you can see quite a bit more what the base looks like. Quite neat. Coming up, look at the fins. The work on the back. You can see I like the little dimples over here. Right there. It's kind of hard to see because it's focusing on the wrong thing, but here it goes. You can see the little freckles on the back. The shoulder blades. That's a really, really nice shot of her face. Pull back just a little bit. Let's twirl her. So detail on the head, the hair, and then her hands. The nice rings. close, try to get some of that, that glare off. Well, you can see the rings pretty well, but unfortunately the hand gets washed out. Here's the bracelets. Little Mermaid, painted by Jim Capone as Ariel, off a sculpture by Roberto Van Beer, inspired by J. Scott Campbell's fairy tale fantasy, The Little Mermaid. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, not a very, very common kit. Until next time, take care.